so coming to the management uh, let's first see one question which of the following is used for hirsutism females except spironolactone oxandrolone finasteride and flutamide i want all of you to think of some answer i hope you have taken one stand of one an option i'll come back to you after the management again what is the answer here okay so now in the management where are the two basic things which are going wrong one who is the one which is causing the gif everything and making this pcos become more and more it is the insulin insulin is the one which is causing tika cell lh to increase and tika cell hypertrophy to happen right so we want to cut off this insulin we want to decrease the levels of insulin so in the management we can use insulin sensitizers so in insulin sensitizer the main drug which we have is metformin metformin is an oral hypoglycemic agent which can be used here for to decrease the insulin resistance uh, one question which is very classically asked on metformin is what is the dangerous side effect of metformin that is it causes lactic acidosis next any other insulin sensitizers i keep i sell i keep i always believe that you should be updated with all the recent things so i my classes you have the most benefit that that you will get coverage of all the image based as well as all the recent advances so you have some recent insulin sensitizer that is inositols you have myo inositol and dicyro inositol if you actually know what are these inositols inositol triphosphate they are secondary messengers so these are also increase the sensitization of the insulin they decrease in they decrease the insulin resistance and when patient uses this myo inositol and dicyro inositol the studies have shown that they have decreased side effect and they are helping in the anovulation so this is about the combating with one villain that is the insulin now next is who is the next villain who is helping the pcos to go on happening again and again and to continue that cycle so where is this estrone being produced estrone is getting peripherally converted in fat so what do you want to do in the management don't you want to cut down those that fat yes so the second thing or actually to be frank all the patients who come to us the first thing what we advise them is weight reduction why weight reduction i hope you are all pretty clear the weight reduction see i believe in where you should understand the concepts that helps you in a long term memory then just knowing the point wise things so what you are getting the point wise management point wise notes apart from that i want you to understand what you are writing so here the management where was the peripheral conversion occurring it was in the fat cells adipose tissues where there is increased estrone this is the one which was the one which is causing again positive lh so don't you want to decrease this so how will you decrease this conversion you have to cut down the fat cells so you will suggest all patients who will come to you the first thing is weight reduction so you will ask them for reduction of weight and in the weight reduction how basically how will you ask them it is by diet and exercise so it's basically lifestyle modification which you have to advise them and the studies have shown that even if they lose 10% body weight it will cause resumption of cycles so even if they lose 10% of their body weight it will cause resumption of their body ovulation so these are the basic management we are cutting off the two villains now apart from that the rest of the management depends on the age now let's take adolescent girls 
Now, adolescent girls are more bothered about the beauty. That is the age of growing. So, they are more bothered about what? They are bothered about, are they bothered about infertility or something? That they have no clue of what it is. So, they are more bothered of a taboo that the cycle should be regular. The things, next thing there, which is unacceptable for them is acne, hirsutism. So, they come to you more in favor, more in the, for the treatment of hirsutism and for the regularization of cycles. So, for an adolescent girls, or for, for adolescent girls who are having the problem with the hirsutism and regularization of cycles. So, what is the treatment to regularize the cycles? So, for regularization of cycles, what you can do is, you can give cyclical progesterone. So, you ask the patient to see for 45 days or uh, for 30 to 45 days and if the, she doesn't get any cycles, she can take 5 days of progesterone and withdraw it. So, indirectly you are giving progesterone and when you do the withdrawal, she will start bleeding. So, you can give cyclical progesterone or you can give continuous OC pills. So, you can give combined oral contraceptive pills. So, when you give either or combined oral contraceptive pills or cyclical progesterone, what will happen? So, she will have, she will have, once you are giving OC pills for 21 days, when you stop OC pills, she will get the bleeding. Same way when you give progesterone for 5 days and withdraw it, she will get a bleeding. So, till you are using this, what will she feel that? Yes, I am getting regular cycles. But I want to ask you one question. When you stop using this, will she still get regular cycles? No. So, it is just a temporary treatment. It is just to show that yes, she is getting a cycle only on the support of some drugs. So, it is only a temporary management. It is not a permanent management, right? So, one thing is this. Next, discuss about the hirsutism. Now, how do you manage a case of hirsutism? So, in hirsutism, the first line drug is oral contraceptive pills especially the pills which contain progesterone called ciproteron acetate the oral contraceptive pills are the first line especially which contains the progesterone called ciproteron acetate and ciproteron acetate is a fourth generation pill fourth generation progesterone which has anti-androgenic action. And you have to give this continuously for 6 months to see any results in decreasing in the... When you want to see that, yes, the hirsutism is decreasing, you have to give at least minimum continuously for 6 months, especially with the progesterone containing ciproteron acetate. What is the other mechanism which, is, which helps in decreasing this is hirsutism is... The OC pills increase the levels of sex hormone binding globulin. When sex hormone binding globulin is increased, what will happen to the free testosterone or free androgens? They decrease. So, they decrease the free testosterone. This is how they are acting. So, OC pills is the first line. The next drug which we can use is progesterone continuously for 6 months especially which progesterone do you want to use you can either use OCPs containing both or you can use only progesterone which is contains six progesterone ciproteron acetate the next thing which we give it, which we can use is spironolactone what is spironolactone it is a potassium sparing diuretic. Spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic. So, how we, it also has anti androgen action. That is the reason why we are using here. The next is we have flutamide. Flutamide is androgen receptor blocker. And next is 
Finasteride. Finasteride. The finasteride is 5 alpha reductase inhibitor. Finasteride is 5 alpha reductase inhibitor. So, what does this do? When, when you are using this finasteride, Basically, the testosterone to become potent testosterone, that is dihydrotestosterone, the enzyme which is required is 5-alpha reductase. So, when this is inhibited, the potent testosterone is not formed. When potent testosterone is not formed, no erythritism. So, that is how it, this is acting. So, it prevents the testosterone to become dihydrotestosterone. And you also have cream called eflornithin hydrochloride and you also have a cream called eflornithin hydrochloride so in hirsutism so what are the drugs which we can use we have the first line oral contraceptive pills which contain cipro especially which contain a progesterone called ciproteron acetate which we can use continuously for 6 months. How are they acting? Ciproteron acetate is a 4th generation progesterone which has anti-androgenic action and it increases the level of sex hormone binding globulin which decreases the free testosterone. The second drug is that we can only use the progesterones and then we have spironolactone which is a potassium sparing diuretic. Next we have flutamide which is androgen receptor blocker. Next we have finasteride which is a 5-alpha reductase blocker and we have a cream called eflornithin hydrochloride. Some more MCQs on hirsutism are, you get a single line is asking which is the most common cause of hirsutism. The most common cause of hirsutism is idiopathic. Most common cause of hirsutism is idiopathic, no reason. Most common pathological cause of hirsutism is PCOS. What causes the rapid increase in the hirsutism? Rapid virilization. Cause for rapid virilization are tumors, adrenal or adrenal or ovarian tumors. One more point which you should know is how do you grade the hirsutism? How do you grade the hirsutism is grading of hirsutism is done by Ferryman Galway scoring. So you have modified Ferryman Galway scoring. The grading is done by modified Ferryman Galway scoring. So the grading is done by modified Ferryman Galway scoring. So this is everything about the hirsutism in uh, which you have to know. One more I would like to clear here. Hirsutism is growth or un unwanted hair which is growing. So when they have beard or when they usually females don't have beard. beard. So excessive hair growth on the hands, beard or moustache which they develop, you call it as hirsutism. But what is this virilization? I wrote rapid virilization. So when you have high levels of testosterone or the androgens, they not only increase the hair growth, they also make us a male pattern, male pattern of the hair growth, that is one. Apart from that, they will also help in the male growth. In a female, a male growth. What does that mean? Deepening of voice. The female will have deepening of the voice, Apart from the abnormal hair growth, they'll have acne, deepening of voice, all those androgenic side effects together you call them as rap virilization. So rap when you have not only hirsutism, two virilization, you have to think in terms of any ovarian or adrenal tumors. PCOS will never lead to so high levels of testosterone. PCOS will only lead to moderate rise in the testosterone or androgen levels. Okay. So this is in the treatment for an adolescent girl. Now how do you treat a case of a patient who is reproductive age group? Now is, I will, I will, let me tell you once they are married, 
Once the, ma once the marriage is over, nobody is bothered whether they are getting hirsutism or not getting hirsutism. After marriage, anyway, husband won't leave. So what is the most important once they get married? So they are more bothered about the infertility problem. So once the marriage is over, what they are more bothered is infertility problem. So PCOS with infertility, how do we treat it? That's what we are going to discuss next. So let's go back to the question which I have asked in the starting. Which of the following is used for hirsutism in females except spinolactones? Do we use or we don't use? We use. And what is it? It is an anti-androgen, actually potassium sparing dietic. Oxandrolone. Did we re read oxandrolone? No. So oxandrolone is the answer. Phenasteride, yes. It is 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Flutamide, androgen receptor blocker. So answer is B. Let's go for one more question here. Most common cause of hirsutism in a young female, ovarian tumor, adrenal tumor, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, PCOS. It is PCOS. As I have told you, the most common pathological cause is PCOS.